Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing with your hosts, Glenn Thayer and the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. Folks, welcome back to another Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. Uh, you know, Tom and I have been talking a lot lately about stories and really how can stories impact your business. And so what better way to uh, move the story needle forward than to do a podcast on it? So, Tom, let's uh, let's chat. Why why the story podcast this time around? Well, we've talked quite a bit about content marketing and we've talked about that in our podcast and we've written a lot about it on, on our website and I thought I would go a little bit further into content and get to kind of what, what the root of content is. And the root of content really is stories and telling stories. And I think it's important for the web marketer to understand, and even the small business owner, to understand that your customers and your prospects want to relate with the story of your business. And in many ways, that story of your business then is how the value is translated. So, so many people would that would that mean i mean would that mean something like let's say take your business your business story how it started is there a story on how your business started does that relate to it or is there something else oh it's it's it that's really important but it's so much deeper than that because not only do people want to know your background where you came from and how you started and so forth but they want to better understand how you provide value to your customers and how you will provide value to them and the thing about a story is stories are really metaphors for life and, and, and what people do on websites all the time is they go to a website, they try to understand what that website's telling them to do or what it's about. They have their own interpretation of it, and then they go on and make a decision. Do I proceed with this company or do I go somewhere else? Do I make a referral? What do I do? A, what a story can do is better help you engage with customers and get a better understanding of what your business is about through this metaphor, through this telling of this metaphor. And so when you think about the stories that your business tells, it goes a lot further than just this is the history of our company. It goes into what, is, what are the values of your business? What is the mission of your business? And give us concrete examples of how that mission is realized day to day. This is something that is skipped over way too much by marketing folks. And the internet really this year and in, in, in the coming years is going to push more and more for people to clearly identify the story because if they don't do it, their competitors will and, com and customers will better relate to those competitors and do business with them. So it's kind of a fascinating thing that the web's doing now with storytelling. So how does it differ? How does, how does a story differ than a case from a case study? I think a case study would be part of your storytelling strategy and case studies might be core or central to what you're doing. Um, or can you take, or can you take a case study and revamp the case study into a story? So instead of saying, here's the case study, here was what the objectives are, here's this, but weave a case study into a story. So instead of having case studies on your website, which are, I, I, I'm seeing less and less of them these days, but what about changing your case study and turning it into a story about your customer or your client? It's, it's a great thing to do. And, and if you think about all the great stories that you've read in books or seen in movies or seen in plays, they have several dynamics that they, that they do. And these stories also take place in your company. And I think you're right. The idea of a case story or a case study or a testimonial, those can be overused because they all are positive, right? And so if someone comes to a website and says, oh, yeah, they got to put case studies on their website, they're all going to be positive things, but that may not be what happens to me, right? My experience might not be the same. And in fact, I can't see all the case studies and really understand the business. So what a story can do is it can, you can use the elements of a story to show the deeper value of your business and what you do. And I think it's fine to do case studies on your website that maybe didn't have, you know, superstar results or weren't, you know, um, um, name recognition type case studies. Because that all builds a story. And, and in addition to that, um, social media now has become an ongoing live story that's happening in real time in front of all, all of us right on the internet. You can control that story. You can control the responses to negative um, comments. You can control what type of comments and what kind of, of things you want to discuss. Um, because one of the key elements of a story, and this is probably something you haven't thought about, is that 
that stories introduce someone or something that's moving through a journey. And as they move through this journey toward a goal, they run into conflict. They run into situations that, that stop them from attaining their goals, right? Well, all of your customers experience this. They have challenges in front of them. They have conflict in front of them. And your business in many ways becomes the hero or the source of, of dealing with those conflicts and, 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 and improving them, improving their life, improving their business life, getting resolution to the conflict and so forth. So this story is something that's universal to human existence. We all understand this. We live it every day. And the better you can tell that, the better you'll relate to your customers. And I think the better you will be as a marketer, right? You'll attract the right kind of people to you. The key part of this, though, that we make the mistake in doing is a lot of times we, we gloss over what the real cl- conflict is. We tend to lean too much on just like marketing content and brochure copy, or we focus on, well, how great we are. We just focus on the hero, right? Us, how great we are, as opposed to focusing on the real conflict in the customers, the challenge the customers are going through, and how your company can overcome that. That's all the core of storytelling. So here's the big question, though, because I know our, our viewers and listeners are thinking to themselves, great, Tom, Glenn, appreciate it. Would love to get stories in. I'm not a storyteller, not a writer, not a screenwriter. Don't even write poetry or even bad haiku. How do you even start writing a story that would be relevant that anybody would want to read? It's a great question. And it's something that we deal with all the time here at Intuitive Websites. And we have found an excellent resource to solve this. It's called Writer's Access, writersaccess.com. The thing that Writer's Access does is it gives money to out-of-work writers, basically, or writers that are looking for a part-time gig. And there's a lot of people out there that are very good writers, but they really need the inspiration. They need a topic to write about. Your challenge as a business leader, business owner, marketer, is to come up with the idea around the story, the structure around the story, and the strategy for having the story. Once you do those three things, send send some research, send a few links to, to someone at Writer's Access, Give them an idea of how many words you need, what the topic is about, where where you want to post it, and you'll see amazing things coming back. Um, And you can pursue this from a lot of different angles. You can go the angle of a technical writer. You can go the angle of a a creative writer who's more of a dramatic writer. All of those are available to you, and it should be part of your strategy. So the resources is a huge challenge. The writing resources are a challenge. But the internet has also created these amazing solutions. There's many other sites like Writer's Access Um, the biggest part of writer's access is the bang for the buck. Um, It used to be that you'd have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to get a a good writer in place. But the structure behind writer's access is is that at $35, $50, $75, you get great pieces of content coming back. Oh, wow. So, I mean, how how do we, I mean, obviously, is, is this a trend? I mean, is this something that we're seeing that, it's going to be, okay, great, stories Stories are here now, and it's all feel good. And the next year, it's like, okay, we're back to hardcore business. I mean, is that all going to go away? Yeah, it's, it, it's going to modify and change over time, absolutely. I don't think it's ever going to go away. I do think that in many ways, your current website that you have right now is a storytelling device. Whatever you put on your website, you're telling a story with that content. Uh, the whole entirety of your web marketing effort is communicating a story. And in many ways, I'm going to ask business leaders to even step back and think about how your entire marketing message is communicating a story about your company. Are you a plastic generic company that doesn't have a lot to say and you're excellent like everybody else? Or are you a company with depth that that can can show their values, show their mission, explain the services that you, you provide to other, explain the human elements of your business and, and how you relate to customers in that way. That's telling a story. And you do that on the web actually with a lot more than just written content. And you can do it with videos, you can do it with graphics, you can do it with slideshows, you can do it with lots of different things, even you know audio podcasts like what we're doing here. This tells a story about uh, my company, Intuitive Websites, where we come from, what we're about. So, so I think it's a trend that's here to stay. <laughs> So how do we, I mean, so I guess the, the other piece of it is, okay, so it's a trend that's here to stay. What about ROI? Because that's going to be the biggest thing, because obviously there is an investment in there. It's not If you have somebody on staff that can do it, it's an investment of time. It's either an investment of time or money, and at the end of the day, I think it's an investment of both. So I agree. 
Yes. How do you how do you how do you get the ROI out of a storytelling and initiative? It's it's a it's a great question. Now, I think that storytelling and this marketing through storytelling becomes the real creative side of your business, right? So it's it's hard to track the, the return from this creative side of your business. However, having said that, all of the things we've talked about before in these podcasts apply. You have to set up Google Analytics. You have to monitor your traffic. You have to monitor your success in Google. You have to monitor conversions and so forth. The, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the ROI calculators we've talked about and the one we have on our website, all of this applies to storytelling. And I will bet you that if you put a good uh, storytelling telling strategy in place on your site, you will see improvement in all the metrics that you follow. Um, and then you'll have to figure out you know, how direct an improvement is that and so forth. That is part of the web marketing process that will continue. Um, I, th- I just think it's a good step in, in today's market to do this or your competitors will do it. Now, here's the, is, are there any good sites? Are there any companies that are doing a really good job at storytelling right now? That, that our listeners and viewers can go check out? Well, there's there's several of them. I mean, I think our website, Intuitive Websites, has done a good job at this over the years. The Content Marketing Institute is really a leading uh, the leading website on content marketing. And, and Joe Polizzi does a great job over there. They do. They that. do a great so, job. Social Media Examiner does a great job as well. What these sites have done is they're telling a story mostly through the information that they share with everyone. Now, it would might be nice to know more about the, the founders of this business and get more of their background. I'm sure it's there if you look for it. But overall, what they do is tell a story with the, with the content they push out. And they actually have great resources if you want to learn more about the concept of storytelling through your business. So what would be our key action items for, for our viewers and listeners? Well, to, to get your arms around this and to make it more concrete, because one of the things that, that you have to do with these stories is make sure you use real examples concrete examples, tangible things people can relate to. So if someone were to say, give me an example of how that works, the content in your story would would show that. A starting point for that is to have a history of your company on your About Us page. I think it's also important to, to start this process by first writing down what are your company values and why they're important. Don't just write down the values. You have to write down why that value is important and support it. Because if you don't, they're generic values, right? So you might say honesty is a value. Well, of course, it's a value. But why is honesty a value in your marketplace and so forth? Also, then I uh, focus on customer stories, as we talked about, and how those stories support core values. Um, don't be afraid to put in there stories of customers that were kind of neutral results or even customers that had problems because people learn from those things. Um, now, also, if you put some... I, Go ahead, Glenn. If, if you put something that wasn't as, you know, hey, we had some challenges with this client, we're going to talk about that. Is that a good idea to be able to kind of tweak things out and, and post something that says, this is what we learned and this is what we're now doing in our business because of this experience? I think it's a great idea. And I think that a lot of times this happens in social media anyway. And I think it's fine to tell your marketplace that this customer was not a good fit for you. And maybe, you know, you weren't a good fit for them. I mean, you can explain why, because given your values, this wasn't a fit. This wasn't something that worked out. And you might have to do that on social media. We recently had uh, a a large uh, uh, customer of ours who has lots and lots of visits in social media, had a a pretty bad negative review posted in Facebook. And they they called and said, hey, can you remove that? (laughs) Remove this person immediately. And I said, no, you don't remove, you engage and respond. And sure enough, two very interesting things happened. Once we responded professionally, politely, and very accurately, that person stopped with the negative comments. And the other thing that happened, which was unexpected, is we had three positive comments that same day show up. So what happened is people were reading this interchange, this this exchange that was going on, and they said, that wasn't my experience at all. And it motivated them to post positive comments. And and so there's lots of upsides of doing this. And I do recommend getting feedback from customers, doing market research, watching your social media, and also watching your web stats. The bottom line is thinking of web marketing as a a whole, as the story of your company, the story of your business to the world. The better job you can do that, the better you'll engage with new customers and the more effective you'll be in business in general. 
Awesome. Wonderful. Well, folks, we definitely want to hear your story. So when you've kind of implemented some of the storytelling in your websites, please shoot us an email at info and intuitive websites.com. Let us know what you're doing. We'd love to check out your stories. And we always love to know what our listeners and viewers are up to. Thank you so much for joining Tom and I today. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. For more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com. If you have a website you'd like us to review or an issue you'd like to see covered in future podcasts, email us at info at intuitivewebsites.com.